6.39am in Trinidad and Tobago. We're back with you on the Now Morning Show. So according to the UNDP, immigration to Trinidad and Tobago from Caribbean islands has a long history and significantly impacted the country. In 2016, there was a dramatic change in the source and characteristics of immigrants to Trinidad and Tobago. This morning, we discussed the sociology of immigration of Trinidad and Tobago with Dr. Greg Prieto, lead professor of international studies abroad at the University of San Diego, and Dr. Odesma Dali Rimple, faculty liaison for community engagement, international studies abroad, University of San Diego. Good morning to both of you and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to have you both with us this morning. Now, this is quite an interesting topic, and to see the program that the university has now extended to Trinese and Caribbean students in general is intriguing, given the trends that we have seen. Can you share with us what inspired this program? Sure. Well, I think, firstly, um, you know, USD has a really rich cultural history of study abroad. Um, but we have not yet had a study abroad program that was based in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and I think this was a great opportunity for us to facilitate that exploration and, and, um, and better understanding of what the Caribbean has to offer, but particularly also what the Trinidad and Tobago has to offer. And um, when I had learned that um, Dr. Prieto was offering this class, I felt that it was a really good um, connection between what we offered and what this course would be about. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Dalrymple. So, Dr. Prezo, could you share with us exactly what is being studied in the sociology of immigration? Good morning, yes. So, when I typically teach this course, I teach it in the United States, where our context is primarily oriented to the relationship between U.S. and Mexico, our nearest neighbor. But having this opportunity from Dr. Dalrymple, um, we thought about how we might adapt the course to this context. And so when we came over, we had some ideas of what we wanted to learn more about. And this had to do with things like brain drain, that is the emigration of white collar professionals with high levels of education from Trinidad and Tobago. We wanted to understand trafficking through Trinidad and Tobago. And then I think what we've really learned um, and has become our major focus is the experience of Venezuelan migrants here. Um, and so as we've, you know, come into Trinidad and Tobago, we've had the opportunity to learn about how immigration dynamics are like and unlike um, they are in the United States. So it's been a real privilege, for instance, to work with um, community partners like Living Water Community in Trinidad, um, like um, various other community partners here as well in Tobago. And that's really brought the material to life and it pushed us to think about how our theories of migration do and do not apply in this case. Wonderful to hear that. Dr. Dalrymple, can you share with us exactly how this is conducted? Because we understand, of course, with the University of San Diego um, interacting with students and as Dr. Fraser just mentioned, other institutions in Trinidad and Tobago, but what exactly do you look at in order to conduct such research? So this is less about research, I think, and much more of a curricular experience and an exploration for students. And um, in my capacity, particularly in facilitating community liaison, I am looking to ensure, first of all, that um, with this course, that we have the ability to engage with um, people who have direct impact or direct influence uh, or knowledge of the particular topic that we're exploring. And so in this case, um, as Dr. Prieto mentioned, we had an NGO. We had access to a number of other folks. So for instance, we met with the um, Canadian High Commissioner representatives from the U.S. Embassy. We met with the Venezuelan ambassador um, here in Tobago. We met with um, historian Dr. Phillips um, and economist Dr. James, who both put a whole different sort of framing to in the way that we were able to understand the complexities of this topic. And so when sort of deciding where is a good place for the study of a particular topic, what we want to really ensure is our students being able to engage with sort of um, the, 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 the source, the primary sources of this information, the primary sources of this experience. Um, and we had a lot of opportunity, um, particularly here in Tobago, for instance, to engage with um, the community of African doctors, for instance, who have migrated here and have been contributing significantly 
um, to the medical experience and medical field. Um, and in Trinidad and Tobago in particular, that ability to engage with migrants from both Venezuela and um, Cuba, for instance, and, and sort of hear directly from them what that experience has been. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's interesting that you've mentioned that in particular because many times a lot of people automatically think of the influx of immigrants coming in from Venezuela and don't consider the fact that, again, we have had consistent migration to and from the country for eight decades to say the least. Now, what would you say um, in studying this? Is there anything in particular that perhaps has jumped out in comparison to being a newly immigrant country to a country that has experienced immigration, Dr. Prieto? I think one of the biggest takeaways for me from yesterday, and this comes primarily from our engagement with Dr. James that Dr. Dalrymple just mentioned. So in the U.S., we have an economic framework that's primarily focused on neoliberalism, right? That's the idea of free trade, lowering tariffs, um, driving up exports. And I think the experience here has really taught us there are alternative frameworks to think about development, but now from the perspective of everyday folks. And so that it's not just about creating opportunities for elites to drive business, but also the importance of generating organic finance, creating durable institutions that train people, promote them, instill them with self-confidence that would allow them to drive development in an organic way so that the benefits of it can be more broadly shared. I think that's a real difference from the U.S. context, and I think that's one of the real benefits of taking students abroad. We're exposed to perspectives like development economics um, that we were not exposed to before. And so I've been really excited personally, and I think the students also, um, to learn from the rich intellectual tradition, right, in addition to the rich immigration tradition that's available here in Tobago specifically. Thank you so much for that. So tell us something. Is this something we will see continuing over the years? Because I know many will be watching right now and just maybe interested, just a little bit, of course, in being a part of a program like this. Of course, great to enrich oneself, but also to learn a lot more about Trinidad and Tobago. So can we see more of the University of San Diego coming back to our Twin Island Republic? Oh, most definitely. I mean, this was, the, for the University of San Diego, that is, this has been our inaugural study abroad experience. Oh, but we have so much more already lined up. Um, we're hoping in the future to have, um, to be able to bring um, some teachers who are teachers in training um, to engage with the teachers we have here and maybe exploring some partnerships, um, even still on the migrant sort of framing, but also just on the local framing um, in the way that we can enhance education by co-creating more um, culturally contextualized sorts of uh, manipulatives that help facilitate math learning and other types of STEAM learning as well. Uh, but no, this is this is just the beginning and we've made such great connections. For instance, we were really fortunate to stay at the cultural crossroads when we were in Trinidad, amazing experience. And here in Tobago, we're at Serene Inn and another equally amazing experience. So we've made some really good connections in terms of um, accommodations, um, and then having different folks being able to host and connect us with partners. Um, Mr. Keith George, who works along with the TACO group here in Tobago, and um, Aisha um, Hopkinson, who had really helped in facilitating a lot of the connections in Trinidad. Beautiful. So building those relationships and, of course, definitely investing in the youth of Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean, and the world. So our time is almost over, but before we get to that, of course, we would love to hear some closing comments for you, how you've been enjoying it, and so much more. So Dr. Prieto, we'll start with you. Closing comments? I think the first thing everybody notices about Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, is its natural beauty, and that has uh, certainly met the expectation, exceeded the expectation. But the piece that I want to flag is really the power, as Dr. Dalrymple is saying now, about the relationships we've made here. I think for us, working in Trinidad with Living Water Community and Rochelle Nakid has been such a transformative experience because now the students aren't just reading about it in books, they're experiencing it directly. And without those relationships, without somebody to open those doors for us, we would not experience the depth of learning that we're experiencing now. And so we are just tremendously grateful to the people of Trinidad and Tobago for welcoming us, for greeting us so warmly and creating these opportunities that we'll never forget. Wonderful. Dr. Dalrymple, closing comments? 
Dr. Dalrymple, can you hear us? Uh, just look out for us. Keep looking out for us. We will be back. Oh, Wonderful. yes. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear now. I know that's the beauty of Tobago. Probably just has you a little bit distracted. And I hope that you both enjoy the rest of your time in the Twin Island Republic. And we look forward to having you back again soon. Thank you. Great things are happening for education in Trinidad and Tobago. This is the place to get all the updates. Stay tuned. The Now Morning Show will be back in a few moments.